I just came out with a theory for Crash Team Rumble and I am not happy about it because this theory could possibly mean that multiple characters that I would personally love to see in this game are not going to be in this game. Hey beautiful humans, I'm Ryder CX and today I wanted to just share some of my unhinged thoughts about this recent interview or as a q and I think it's actually a QA and a that Toys for Bob did in regards to Crash Team Rumble. And so we're on the Toys for Bob website over here and they answered a bunch of questions over here and there's so much tea in this blog by the way so there's definitely going to be other videos about this but I thought this was the most important thing that I've not seen a lot of people point out which hopefully means that I'm just crazy and that this is not actually going to be a thing but you know me I'm very uncensored when it comes to my opinions and my thoughts and theories on things and I feel like I think about everything in a very logical sense and so I feel like this makes sense but nonetheless it's something that I really hope isn't true so we're going to talk about new characters and why I think Toys for Bob low-key deconfirmed a bunch of characters through this q a and so there's this little section of questions over here that talk about new characters and there's a lot of good stuff that they mentioned over here so the first mention of it is will you maybe be adding any new characters later or down the road and then toys Bob responded by not maybe most certainly and regularly so there's definitely plans for new characters at least which should be a given crash team rumble is a multiplayer online game it definitely needs more characters beyond the eight that we already know about so far but then the question after that said will there be more characters from the original Crash Bandicoot trilogy. I would really love to see characters like Tiny Tiger, Ripper Roo, Pinstripe, and the Komodo Bros again. And Toy for Bob responds, We're so, so thrilled to see the excitement for new characters. We most certainly have new heroes actively in the works for future seasons, and yes, we are very open to suggestions on who else to queue up for down the world. One thing to note is that we intend on growing the cast thoughtfully and gradually. Each hero in Crash Team Rumble is more than just an avatar. They are completely unique in their movement and combat abilities, and it takes a lot of iteration and tuning to make sure they mechanically contribute to the game's meta in fresh but balanced way. We're not going to rush out heroes that aren't ready in favor of trying to hit a huge cast of favorites and fresh faces. We're looking forward to being thoughtful on how we grow the cast together with you. So there's already lots of hints I'm picking up here that basically tell me that this game is not going to have nearly as big of a roster as say Crash Team Racing did. Which makes complete sense to me because you have to understand in Crash Team Racing Nitro Field, although there are tons of characters there, it doesn't take nearly as much work to implement a character in that game compared to this game. In Crash Team Racing Nitro Field, every character operates pretty much the same way. Everyone drives a car and they just have like differing stats that make them, you know, better at speed or better at turning or better at acceleration, etc, etc. On top of the typical animations that both Crash Team Rumble and Crash Team Racing Nitro Field would be responsible for developing. But with Crash Team Rumble, as we've seen the characters that we've got to play so far, each character already has a bunch of different movesets and abilities that make them unique and definitely take more time to develop beyond just a typical kart racer character. A good comparison for me is take like Smash Brothers, where every character is designed very uniquely and differently to make the experience unique to them. So it is without doubt that new characters in Crash Team Rumble are going to take so much more work than they did in Crash Team Racing Nitro Field. So that's already a point against us having a large cast in the first place. But now this next question is really concerning to me. Do you think you can add characters, stages, and music from all Crash games and not only the PS1 era? And then Toys for Bob sneakily said, lawyers whispering in our ears, maybe, possibly influenced by, unlikely. Now there's two different ways you can interpret this. You can interpret this as Toys for Bob is outright teasing us and just trying to draw us off the scent and that they are going to include characters beyond the PS1 era. I feel like there's nothing in terms of like copyright that would prevent them from doing that because Crash Team Racing Nitro Field, you had Crunch, you had Nina Cortex, you even had like Paya Panda from like a obscure mobile game. There is nothing stopping them from implementing characters beyond Crash's entire history, not just the PS1 games. But then they went on to say possibly influence influenced by and then unlikely. And so there's a difference between the way that they answered this question and the way they answered the question beforehand. The previous question, they had so much more information about it, but they never said that it was unlikely that we were going to see characters from the PS1 era. So this has me concerned because maybe perhaps due to the fact that there are so many things that come with developing a character that Toys for Bob simply just don't have the budget and resources to make that many characters and they're prioritizing the PS1 era characters beyond all the other characters. If this means I don't get to see like Crunch or Nina Cortex in this game, then I'm gonna be pissed. I'm sorry. Those characters to me are more iconic than most PS1 era Crash characters. I'm sorry. Blame me for all you want. 
I got into Crash when Crash Twin Sanity came out. So that's my origin story for Crash Bandicoot. That's what I want to see in this game. But to further cement why I think this theory is actually very plausible, if you look into the next question, they ask, will there be crossovers with other franchises like Spyro? And Toys for Bob just said, intriguing suggestion. So they didn't like outright try to sway us the other direction like they did with the previous question. They kind of just left it up in the air. And so if something like that wasn't going to happen, they wouldn't want to try to get people's hopes up for that. So by just saying like intriguing suggestion and leaving it really vague like that, then that pretty much guarantees, well, I don't want to say guarantee, but it's very likely that we'll see some kind of representation of other franchises like Spyro. And if y'all have been paying attention to Crash Team Rumble news, apparently there's already some leaks that points out to Spyro being a part of this game. So if we take that evidence into consideration, then it's pretty much a guarantee that Spyro is going to be in this game in some shape or form. Again, the fact that they answered the question this way compared to the previous question where they kind of just tried to, you know, get our hopes like a little bit less high with the release of characters beyond the PS1 era just has me kind of concerned. But then just to further cement that narrative, the question after that said, have you all thought about adding characters from Microsoft IPs in the form of DLC? And then Toys for Bob said, we'd love to. Phil, what do you think? Again, there is no sign over here that they're trying to dissuade people from the fact that that might happen. Outright calling out who is Phil, like the CEO of Microsoft Games or something, I don't know. I know he's a big figure within Microsoft Game Studios. But outright name dropping him and kind of just opening up a dialogue in terms of like what Microsoft characters we could see in here. By the way, I'd love to see characters like Banjo-Kazooie in here. I think that would just be so badass, but we'll, we'll just have to see in the future. But again, my point stands. They pretty much answered every other question in the set of questions about new characters in a very like vague way way that doesn't really sway you one way or the other. The only question where they kind of try to sway us negatively was that question about characters beyond the PS1 era. And if you take into account the fact that these characters take so much more development and processing compared to characters in Crash Team Racing Nitro Feud, that already puts us at a disadvantage in terms of getting all the characters we want because Toys About simply do not have the time or resources to make all those characters. But secondly, these questions kind of make me think that they're prioritizing PS1 era characters and Crash crossovers. PS1 era characters make sense because that's the characters that are most well known to Crash Bandicoot fans overall, so you definitely want to please the majority of the audience, but crossover characters also makes a lot of sense because that's going to be a really great way to bring in new players to this game. I mean, you see games like Fortnite that constantly have these crossover events that keep it in the headlines. Crash Team Rumble would be very smart to do something like that as well. So there's logical reasons why they'd want to prioritize these kind of characters over characters like Crunch or Nina Cortex or Wampa Cheeks. All these characters that are, if we got to be a little bit honest here, are a little bit more obscure compared to all these other characters they could put in the game. Which sucks because, you know, as a longtime Crash Bandicoot fan, I got into Crash during his quote-unquote struggle era, and I fell in love with all these characters personally when I first got into Crash. And so when I saw them appear in Crash Team Racing Nitro Field in the way that they did, that made me so happy. It made me feel like that all fans of Crash Bandicoot were being appeased. But because of the nuances that come with Crash Team Rumbo, I would not not be surprised at this point if we see very little representation of Crash characters beyond the PS1 era. That's just my two cents. Like I said, I really hope I'm wrong about this, but if you've made it to the end of this video and you're still listening, then I hope you can hear how logical this argument is and why I think it makes sense as to why Toys for Bob would approach it this way. Like I said, they didn't outright say that it was not going to happen, but it's very telling that they didn't just like leave it out of the open in the way that they have for these other questions. They outright said that it might be unlikely to see these characters make an appearance here, so they definitely don't want to make any promises that they can't keep. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you agree with this analysis? Do you disagree? Let me know why or why not. Are you excited about this? <laughs> Hopefully you're not excited about this. Are you disappointed about this? Let me know your thoughts. And also, if there's any other things you want me to talk about when it comes to Crash Team Rumble, then let me know in the comments section as well. But um, I just wanted to take a quick second over here to talk about my last video, where I basically just told you all that I have no clue whatsoever what I'm gonna do with Rider CX. And so I think it's such a privilege to be able to just be so upfront and honest about my thoughts when it comes to my YouTube channel and like how things are going, and to get so much like kindness and. So 
support in the comment section. It's such a relief to me. YouTube can be such an isolating process. Like, it's crazy actually. You, you feel like you're struggling with all these problems and even though there's millions of other people on this platform going through the same thing or millions of people that are watching you that can probably understand what you're going through, it still feels very isolating and you almost feel a little guilty to share some of those like concerns because I know that I don't have like a right to success. I know it's something that has to be worked for, that has to be earned, that has to, that requires time and dedication to get. And so just thank you all so much for being so understanding and for really like being so supportive because it honestly was just a little boost that I needed to keep this channel going. And you know what? I feel a little bit more refreshed and I feel like I kind of have a better idea of what people loved about Rider CX and I'm going to try to pull bring some of that stuff back and also try to like incorporate some new things that keeps me excited as well. So yeah, I just wanted to give that quick message and um, thank you all so much. If you made it to this point in the video, then just say hugs in the comment section. Let's confuse everyone. Say hugs in the comment section and I'll know that you saw it to this very end and you know how much I love you. All right, <laughs> enough of that. This is Riders, riding out.